right. I think we're ready to go um, from our side. So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Friedrich Stenlund. I'm a sales manager here in Sweden. Uh, the event is broadcasted here from Sweden today uh, with the help of me and my, uh, especially my colleague Victor Erdlund, who will take you through the DDMRP uh, or Demand Driven Material Requirements Planning. That's just, uh, how it's spelled out. Uh, it's part of the master planning and it's part of uh, Dynamic 365 uh, Finance and Supply Chain. Um, this webinar is part of a series that we are doing. Uh, we focus on digitalization and Microsoft uh, customer leverage and how features and functions and value drivers uh, can bring value to your business. So um, that being said, and without further, further ado, um, I will hand over to my colleague Victor Erlund, who will take you through this seminar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fredrik. Hello, everyone. My name is Victor. Uh, I am a supply chain consultant here at uh, Baterna in Sweden, and um, I am very happy to host this webinar today, uh, where we are going to look into this planning method called DDMRP, demand-driven MRP. So um, most ERP systems today have support for this method. It's it's uh, nothing unique for uh, for an ERP or, or, uh, or such, so uh, and so does the 365 supply chain management, of course. Uh, so first, I want to share a, a statement from uh, from uh, Dave here. <laughs> I don't know if uh, some of you can relate to this, uh, you supply chain professionals, uh, but uh, I think it uh, takes uh, like a certain kind of mental toughness to work with supply chain. So. Uh, uh, kudos to you all, and um, I think that all new tools that we can uh, use and explore to uh, to help us take the right decisions, being more effective, uh, are definitely worth exploring. And DDMRP is, is such a tool, I think. So MRP and DDMRP have a lot in common. So uh, we will start to look at how uh, MRP works today. And then we will dissect the DDMRP method and its five components. Uh, we will uh, see what it is, uh, how it works, and see how we can apply this in uh, D365, of course. And if there is any time left, we are happy to answer any questions you might have. So feel free to post questions in the QA section. You find it up here or up here somewhere. And uh, we will try to gather them all in the end. Uh, if there are many questions, we will uh, we will uh, publish uh, answers in writing in uh, the email that goes out after the webinar. So depends on the time we have. Uh, so uh, MRP stands for uh, Material Requirements Planning, and uh, it's the system within the ERP system you could say that that calculates what is needed and when. Uh, and it was developed in the 1960s uh, and 70s, and it quite quickly became uh, the like standard way of planning uh, in the 70s, 80s. It was along um, uh, uh, with the computer, the evolution of computers, really. Uh, so, how does MRP work then? Well. MRP considers uh, input in form of bills of materials, uh, forecasts, existing orders like sales orders, purchase orders, production orders. It looks at inventory on hand and also master data such as lead times, safety stocks, order quantities, etc. And M MRP will then do calculations and produce some output, which is basically a bunch of planned or suggested uh, supply orders that are needed to fulfill demand. So MRP can also give recommendations for already existing orders, like suggesting to cancel or reschedule orders. So in theory, it looks quite good, but there are a lot of companies that don't trust this output very much. So and in some cases, this might be because the input is not of good quality. So for instance, if we do a poor job of forecasting here, 
the output will also be poor, of course. So if we don't maintain the master data like lead times, multiples, uh, safety stocks, the output will be poor. So anyway, we could describe MRP as follows. MRP explodes the bill of materials all the way down to the lowest level. Uh, everything in the bill of material is dependent on each other and time phased. MRP often relies on forecast um, to work as intended. The MRP calculations always nets to zero. So you could sort of fool MRP by introducing safety stock as well, and we will get back to that later. MRP gives us output in form of due dates. So there is not much support from MRP really to see if a specific date is uh, really critical or not. So we just we just get a whole bunch of due dates. So and we could we could say that MRP is the perfect like no stock make the order system, and it was actually designed uh, with this purpose in mind. But a lot has happened in the world since the 1960s when this was developed. In general, everything has become more complex here. Uh, if we look at uh, component lead times, due to the increase of global trade since the last decades, we source a lot of parts from overseas. So lead times have gone from short to long. Uh, product life cycles have gone from long to short. Uh, product customization uh, have, have gone from low to high uh, due to the same reasons as product life cycles. You have uh, technical development, online trade uh, influencing these factors. Uh, customer tolerance times, uh, this is a big one. Um, like today, you could order stuff online and have them delivered tomorrow or even the same day in some parts of the world. So. Uh, and the point is that the overall complexity of the supply chain, uh, of everybody's supply chain, uh, have increased a lot. So uh, the demand-driven MRP method, it was developed with these sort of new market conditions in mind, you could say, and it was introduced about 10 years ago. Uh, and it seems to really gain a lot of popularity now in recent years. And here's the definition of the DMRP from uh, the Demand Driven Institute. And uh, the Demand Driven Institute, DDI, is sort of the leading authority on DDMRP today. So there is a lot of resources there. So they say uh, a method to model, plan, and manage supply chains to protect and promote the flow of relevant information and materials. The EDMRP uses strategic decoupling points to drive supply order generation and management throughout a uh, supply chain. So the EDMRP is not uh, a completely new engine. Uh, it takes the existing MRP engine and it adds additional functionality uh, with inspiration from more modern concepts like lean production, uh, Six Sigma and, and stuff like that. So some key concepts of the DMRP are to use more of a pull instead of a push. So, for instance, um, a general MRP setup would be to have a forecast and to plan and produce against the forecast, which is sort of a push system. Uh, DDMRP, it doesn't rely on a forecast in that sense at all, actually. So, more on this later. Uh, visualizations of your stock positions and uh, make it easier to plan by priority is one of the targets of TDMRP and also to have shock absorption or buffers at the right places in the supply chain to deal with variability and to dampen what we call the bullwhip effect. So what is the bullwhip effect about? Um, like in a typical supply chain today, you might have several parties involved and what often happens is that the demand signal from the end customer gets kind of distorted and amplified downstream in the supply chain. So especially when you deal with increasing demand for a product, uh, for instance, that 
uh, that goes from a very stable demand to like a very stochastic uh, demand. So let's say an end customer orders a quantity from, from the retailer here. Uh, the retailer might order a little bit more from the wholesaler so they can satisfy the customer order and to cover for some uncertainty. Uh, the wholesaler might reason in a similar way and so on. So the supply chain basically creates much more supply and stress than is actually needed. So um, this is a, a kind of simplified example, of course, but I'm sure a lot of you can relate uh, to, uh, to scenarios in, in the real world. Um, and this bull whip effect also goes the other way around. A small event at the supplier's site gets amplified and answers a huge problem later on uh, for the customer. Like a typical DDMRP move here would be to place a buffer stock or decoupling point, as DDMRP calls it, in the supply chain. So for example, a buffer placed at the wholesaler here would work as a kind of shock absorber and kill this bull whip effect. So this will uh, instead create two independent flows. So you have one flow here and one flow here instead of one big independent flow. Um, and this decoupling point, aka buffer stock, will uh, uh, absorb a lot of this vari variability both up and downstream. So that's the idea. So we are basically talking about positioning buffer stocks first, uh, or decoupling points as we call them, uh, at strategic places. Then we want to manage these buffers, uh, we want to protect them, and then we want to execute this planning in a, a pull and priority based way. That's the core idea. In more detail, the method has five components. The first is strategic inventory positioning. Uh, that's where to put the stock buffers. The second is to determine what size or profile these stock buffers should have. Third is to have them adjust dynamically according to the actual usage and demand. The fourth and fifth is about the order generation and the execution part of the process. So let's start with number one here. Uh, let's look at the bill of material from a company who makes electric guitars. So each blue box is an SKU here. So this guitar consists of a neck, a body and strings that are assembled together. And the lead time of this assembly is three days. We can see that here, the lead time. Uh, so the neck here uh, consists of a wood neck and some tuners with certain lead times. The complete body here consists of some stuff as well. Uh, the painted body part is made of some older and some paint, and we could see that the older here has uh, quite a long lead time. And we have the strings, of course. So if we don't have any stock at all, and they're about to produce this item and purchase all parts, it has a cumulative lead time, uh, we say, uh, of 60 days. So this is the longest path in uh, the product structure, the longest lead time path. Um, so we now want to make a strategic choice where to put our stock buffers or decoupling points, as we call them. And we must consider many things here. So first we need to achieve a lead time to match the customer tolerance time. Um, and that means how long the customer could accept to wait for delivery. Uh, and we also want to protect critical bottlenecks like work uh, uh, stations and uh, machines that are quite risky and fragile. Um, so let's introduce some decoupling points here. Um, let's say that our customer are in general prepared to wait a couple of weeks for delivery of this product. So that means we don't need to keep any stock here at the finished good level. So instead, let's say that we place a decoupling point at the neck. Uh, we motivate this 
because the purchased items in it have quite long lead times. And the neck workstation here is a sort of a bottleneck in our factory. And we also place a point at the painted body because the alder wood has a very long lead time. And the outcome of this painting process is um, very unpredictable. A lot of quality issues. Uh, we need to have some imagination here. Uh, so this means that the new cumulative lead time or the decoupled lead time, as DDMRP calls it, is now 3 plus 2 plus 10. It's 15 days. So this now becomes the longest path in the product structure because we always assume that we will have the painted body and the neck on, on stock. And again, we call uh, these buffer stocks here decoupling points because we actually decouple the bill of material. So we get several independent structures. We get structure here, structure here, instead of one big super independent structure, so to speak. Uh, next step is to determine the buffer profiles and the levels for these decoupling points. So this is a common symbol for DDMRP buffers uh, or decoupling points where we have a green, yellow and a red zone. Uh, so if you're in the green zone, it means uh, you're OK in general. If you're in the yellow zone, you have passed a reorder point and you should place a replenishment order. Uh, if you're in the red zone, it means that you are very late. You need to prioritize uh, this. And in general, the DDMRP system will calculate the size of this buffer and those specific zones based on the actual average usage of the item uh, over a period you decide yourself. So, for instance, the yellow zone will be will be decided by multiplying the average daily usage with the lead time. Um, the green and red zone has a bit more complex calculations going on. Um, we will not go into specific details today, but um, uh, there are plenty uh, stuff online and uh, also at the Microsoft uh, Learn resource website, uh, you can see the exact formulas, how these zones are calculated. Uh, however, the uh, the average daily usage and uh, this uh, the couple lead time are key factors in these calculations as well. So, and you can also set all the buffer values manually if you like. For example, in case you work with uh, new items or um, like a new item don't have any usage history, so you need to manipulate that, um, or you need to boost the buffer uh, from some other reason. Uh, seasonality or whatever. So moving on to step three, once the buffer rules are set, uh, we will allow the system to automatically calculate and adjust the buffer size smoothly every day if we like even. So as we saw in the previous slide, the system will track the average daily usage and if it goes down or if it goes up, so will the size of the buffer here. Uh, let's move on to the planning step to see how the orders are generated. Um, so this is a key difference from MRP versus TDMRP. Uh, the red plus the yellow zone will establish a reorder point. And this reorder point is triggered by what we call the net flow quantity. So the net flow is essentially uh, on hand plus open supply orders minus qualified demand. And qualified demand in this case is basically demand from existing sales orders. Uh, so if this net flow sinks below the reorder point, uh, it will simply create the planned order. So that's how the order generation works uh, uh, in DDMRP. And the DDMRP will also size this planned order with a quantity to fill up to the roof of the green zone here. And um, it will it will consider if you have order multiples, minimum order quantities and, and such as well. So. Essentially, the order generation 
doesn't uh, depend on any forecast to work uh, properly or safety stock parameter here. It um, it works with only with information we know more for sure, so to speak. So we have the actual usage to properly size the buffer and the reorder point, which is triggered by the net flow and the net flow um, is um, is calculated by uh, what we saw earlier on hand open supply orders and existing sales orders so that's kind of known uh, stuff that are known pretty much uh, the last step uh, the execution it refers to the daily planning and monitoring um, it's basically a color-coded dashboard view of your buffers um this is the view from uh, the 365 supply chain management i think in other erp systems uh, it looks uh, quite similar um so here you can easily see what you need to focus on um you will see the obvious colors here green um, yellow and red of course but also you have an exact priority value here so higher priority means more critical um, or actually it's it's lower <laughs> uh, here depending on how you express that um, so this is the view where you see if you need to place any supply orders um, so if you are in the green no action the yellow and red ones you should replenish and the red ones are more critical so just placing the supply orders here will make these go green because we now look at the, uh, look at the, the buffer based on the net flow, not from actual on hand availability. So that's why you need to monitor uh, the buffers from the on hand perspective as well. And we will see that in the system soon here. So let's uh, recap a little bit on how DDMRP differs from MRP. MRP explodes the bill of materials all the way down. It creates a dependency. It relies on forecasts. It always nets to zero. And it's quite due date focused. The output is, is a bunch of dates, basically. DDMRP, on the other hand, it, it explodes, but the exploding stops at each decoupling point. So that creates a sort of independency in the uh, in the supply chain, which we talked about earlier. Uh, DDMRP doesn't rely on forecast in the same way. Uh, the order generation was just from known uh, things that you know. Um, it never nets to zero. And the output uh, has a like priority dimension to it now. So that's basically the uh, the big uh, differences here. Um, so what's the difference between the MRP safety stocks and the DDMRP, the coupling points? Uh, that's a common question, and uh, I that was my first question as well uh, when looking at DDMRP. Uh, and DDMRP actually states that safety stock in MRP is an uh, ineffective way of keeping inventory positions and they mean that MRP was not designed uh, from the start to carry any buffers in the uh, in the supply chain so this safety stock parameter was kind of introduced as like an ad hoc solution so um, and when you think of it it kind of uh, is correct because because MRP treats the safety stock as something you uh, shouldn't consume. Uh, the DDMRP buffers are designed a bit different. They are allowed to be consumed, so, so to speak. Um, and also uh, DDMRP decoupling points, it will actually decouple the bill of material, just as we saw earlier on, on uh, that guitar, if you remember. Um, uh, MRP safety stock will not decouple the bill of material in the same way, but they have a lot in common. Um, that's that's for sure. So uh, let's look at the benefits from implementing DDMRP. Uh, here's what the Demand Driven Institute say. Uh, improved customer service, 
users consists consistently achieve 97 to 100% on time fill rate performance, lead time compression, lead time reductions in excess of 80%, typical inventory reductions of 30 to 45%, lowest total supply chain cost, um, costs related to expedite activity and false signals are largely eliminated. Easy and intuitive, planners see priorities instead of constantly fighting the conflicting messages of MRP. So uh, this sounds uh, this sounds awesome. It sounds really great, right? So, um, but we kind of don't know the exact the exact baseline uh, for these results. So, like, what do we compare against when seeing these results? Um, so things like this is is always hard to measure. Uh, it's a good idea to um, to study some more to look at specific case studies from different sources. Uh, I think to uh, to kind of build your own uh, view uh, as well. So does the DMRP suit your supply chain? Um, again, it depends completely on what the baseline is, uh, where you are today. So if you have extremely good MRP competence, you have good uh, control of your parameters, you can easily forecast your demand, uh, then you will probably not have huge benefits. Um, on the other hand, if you operate in a market where forecasting is very complex or even impossible, uh, if you struggle to maintain this forecast or other parameters like safety stocks in particular, uh, and if you like this idea of uh, a visualized and and uh, more priority based way of planning you get, then it might be a game changer for you. So it totally depends, I think. This is my opinion, my personal opinion. Uh, so uh, let's go into uh, D365 now to see how we can set this up. Okay, so here is uh, how we set up DDMRP in uh, D365 supply chain management. So here's our demo environment and uh, first some prerequisites here. You need to have planning optimization enabled. So if you are unsure whether you have it enabled or not, you could go to master planning setup and planning optimization parameters. Here you will see if uh, you are using planning optimization. And second, you need to enable a couple of features here. So uh, you should go to your feature management workspace. And here you will have uh, a feature called, let's see, priority. Priority driven MRP support for planning optimization. You need to enable that one. And you need to enable the feature that is called DD MRP for planning optimizations. So those are the prerequisites here. And you are now ready to set up a coverage group because the way D365 knows whether to treat an item as a decoupling point, as a DDMRP item, is by the coverage group. So you need to go into your coverage groups. Uh, you can find them in master planning, set up coverage, coverage groups. And here you need to create a new coverage group then. So uh, we can have a look at uh, this coverage group I created earlier. And we have the, the coverage code here, decoupling point. Uh, that needs to be specified. And then you have uh, a bunch of um, DDMRP parameters down here. So you have the lead time factor and vari uh, variability factor. And these are factors you can use to influence the uh, size of the buffer. So um, uh, we will not go into specific details, 
uh, right now about these factors, but you can use them, uh, as I just said, to influence the size of the buffer. So you can have several coverage groups uh, where you have one um, like DDMRP small, DDMRP medium, DDMRP uh, large, or something like that with different factors here. Uh, and you have this mean, max, and reorder point period. This is basically asking you, okay, do you want to calculate the buffer sizes daily or weekly? So we go with daily here. Average daily usage based on. So here uh, you can use past, which we uh, talked about um, in the webinar. You can also use forward, so you can use DDMRP in conjunction with a forecast. Um, we will not go dive deep into that now, however, but you can, uh, and you can use a blended method as well. Uh, if we choose past here, we will define a past period, uh, the number of days which you want to look at. So in this case, when we choose 30, the system will track the last 30 days usage. And here you have a bunch of uh, additional parameters that uh, are like fine tuning if you use the blended method or forward period or forward method here. So that's it for the coverage group. You have that one set up. And now you need to assign this coverage group to the item or items. So if you go to your release products, so what are you doing now? You are uh, basically in the process of strategic inventory positioning. So you analyze your, uh, uh, your products, uh, your operations, your bill of materials and decide, okay, we want to uh, treat this item as the coupling point here. So let's choose this one, seed fabric. And normally you would assign a coverage group to your release product here under the plan tab coverage group. But when we try to do this now, we it would throw an error to us because the DDMRP coverage uh, group must be set against a specific warehouse. Okay, so we can't set it on, on this level. So we need to go into item coverage. And uh, just delete this one. You choose new. And you choose your site and warehouse. And then you need to go into the general tab here. Use specific settings and here you will specify the DDMRP coverage group you just created. Uh, so uh, that's the first step here. Next you need to actually calculate uh, the decoupled lead time. This is something you can do as a batch job, so we don't need to do this manually, but DDMRP requires us to do that. Uh, and if we now look here at the specific parameters that will influence DDMRP, is, uh, you can see buffer values over time. So this is basically asking you do you want the system to automatically calculate the buffer values? So normally you would go for yes here, but now I will leave it to no as I will manipulate these, these numbers so we can see what happens. Uh, you have uh, the average daily usage here. So you can, as I said, you can manipulate this uh, manually if you like. So if we just put average daily usage to one here, and then you run this calculate mean max and reorder point quantities. This is also something you will normally do as a batch job, uh, but you can do it manually by, by doing it this way. So when I press this, you can see that a bunch of values was populated here. So minimum is actually the roof of the red buffer zone. The reorder point is basically the roof of the yellow buffer zone and the maximum is the is the max is the roof of the green zone the max of, of the buffer here so as the system 
tracks this average daily usage if we use the past method and we have this to yes. Uh, let's say the average daily usage goes up to 1.3. And then the system will calculate it and update the buffer values like that. So uh, that's it for um, assigning the coverage group to the item and uh, the buffer sizes here. Uh, you have some additional uh, tabs here uh, connected to DDMRP. Uh, you have like, let's see, I will just change item here so I can see some history. The coverage. Like the on hand tab. Uh, like each time master planning is run, it will um, it will make a, a record here, so to speak. So you can follow the history of the item, how the on hand has moved in uh, which zones and and uh, uh, such that. So and this type of buffer values will also record a bunch of um, uh, it will record the buffer values for each period. Uh, Basically, so if you let the system to uh, if you let the system calculate it automatically, it will record a bunch of buffer values here. So uh, now we have assigned the coverage group to the item, and uh, so it should be uh, the setup should be pretty much uh, ready. Um, if you go to the modules, master planning and master planning again. You have the DDMRP forms here. So here you will find planned orders for the cupping points. This is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, these are the planned orders for the, the coupling points. And uh, you will also find these planned orders in every other planned order view. So it's not like they're just visible here. They, they're just like any planned order, uh, basically. Uh, calculate buffer values. This is a uh, batch job you can set up uh, or you will set up. So uh, you let the system calculate those buffer values automatically, which we did manually uh, just now. Uh, decouple lead time. This is also where you can set up this uh, batch job to automatically, automatically calculate the decouple lead times. But for now, we will focus a little bit more on these two forms here, because this is where you normally would land as a planner each day. So you have the cupping point status by net flow. And this is the dashboard, uh, which we saw earlier in the, in the webinar. So here you will have an overview of all your decoupling points or buffer stocks. You have the color here. You have the planning priority here. And you have a bunch of information. You could, you could leave it visible or you can hide it and customize it however you want. So, um, and the way of working here, according to the DDMRP method, is to uh, basically order the stuff that are yellow and red, and they will turn green. So if you have this item, for instance, uh, you have a shortcut here to view planned order because this is yellow and this is red, so they should have planned orders generated. These are green, so there should not be any uh, planned orders uh, for these items. So what you see here is not planned orders. This is uh, an overview of, of the decoupling point. So you have a shortcut here. If there are a planned order, if there is a planned order, you will you can access it from here if you like. So here you will have it. So you can you can go ahead and firm from here if you like as well. And when you firm it uh, and run master planning, this decoupling point will turn green. So this is the net flow perspective. So what you need to do is also uh, look at the on-hand perspective of the decoupling points because the net flow only shows whether you have ordered enough or you have you have enough net flow, so to speak. So decoupling point status by on-hand, 
gives you a view of the on-hand situation right now of the buffer. So here you, here you have an additional color. You have blue, that means excess stock. Uh, the green in this case means that the stock is um, just as you would expect, really. The yellow means that you are a bit lower than expected, and the red means you are on critically low levels here. Yeah, so that's uh, basically it, how you set it up in uh, D365 and um, basic uh, way of working. And uh, uh, as we said in the webinar, it's uh, not like you need to implement all items or the, the, this method on like your your entire operations. You you can start with one or two items and 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 try it out and. Uh, See if you like it or not, and how it behaves. Uh, that's the recommended way of of doing this, actually. Okay, so thanks. Where we will find the ways of knowing more. Um, and well, even the next slide, uh, because we have uh, provided you with some links uh, that you. Uh, <clears throat> That you um, that you provided, Victor, on how to understand more on the from Microsoft Learn. There are quite a few YouTube videos um, and also from from other sources. So uh, go have a look in there. Uh, that will be also be part of the of the documentation that we will send out after this this uh, session for you. And uh, if you also go to the next slide. I've got some information here that it actually seems to work again, Victor. So if you want to have a look, um, then afterwards. Uh, but before that, uh, there are things that we could help you with, of course, as well. Uh, we suggest in that case that we do a short sit down with you, have a discovery workshop for a couple of hours, two hours, where we analyze the current planning setup that you use today. Uh, if you there's an animation here, Victor, can you please press the next? Uh, yeah. We discuss uh, the existing issues that you are experiencing, and then we do a fit gap analysis uh, to see. OK, so is there anywhere that where it makes sense for you to use the DDMRP uh, to get those issues out, uh, so to say? And then we create an action plan together. And this is something that we would well propose to you who are interested. Uh, in doing with us in, a, in order to do so. Uh, this is something that you can just reach out to us. Uh, there is the uh, on the next slide, the way of doing that, Victor. Uh, we have uh, the names of people that would be more than happy to to respond those questions uh, to you. Um, and yeah, so this is also something that you will get from us. Uh, and before we end here, uh, the next webinar that we are planning is the uh, security configuration in Dynamics 365, and it's going to be uh, launched in September, first week of September. So that's it. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, all right. Is, is that it for now, Victor? Uh, yeah, it seems we don't have time left to to put that system part in, even if it works now. Or uh, we should okay. still go with with posting the video just, afterwards. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's better. Yeah, it's the more structured way of doing it. Then, um, on behalf of us uh, and Victor, thank you very much for today, and hope to see you in September, if not before. And just reach out if you have anything. Uh, any questions or anything to us. We'll make sure that you get the uh, full presentation from us. Thank you very much and have a really nice day. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.